Dear students, welcome to 26th online class of Control System Engineering. In last lecture, we studied about proportional derivative or PD control and lead controller. These controllers were used to modify the transient specification of a location of a system. A PD controller is made up of active components where lead controller is made up of passive components. Both controllers are used to modify the transient response of a closed loop system. Dear students, after this lecture, you will be able to design a compensator which will improve both the steady state error and the transient response of a system. Dear students, contents of this lecture are proportional, integral and derivative control. This is also known as PID controller. Students, we now combine the design technique to improve the steady state error and transient response independently for the same system. Basically, we first improve the transient response and then we improve the steady state error of compensated system. As an alternative, we can also improve steady state error and then follow with the design in transient response but in some cases following this sequence deteriorate the improvement in the steady state, steady state error which was designed first. The design process can be implemented with active components or passive components which were described previously. Now if we first design an active PT controller followed by followed by active PI controller the resulting compensator is called proportional plus integral plus derivative or PID controller. And if we first design passive lead compensator and then we design a passive lag compensator the resulting compensator is called lead lag compensator dear students a PID controller is shown in the figure and its transfer function is given by GC of S a PID controller has two zeros plus a pole at origin. One zero and one zero and pole at the origin can be designed as the ideal integral compensator. The other zero can be designed as ideal derivative compensator. In PID controller, a sum of proportional error, error integral error, and derivative of error are forwarded to the plant. Dear students, the design technique of PID controller consists of the following step. First of all, evaluate the performance of uncompensated system to determine how much improvement in the transient is required. Now corresponding to step 1 we will design a PD controller to meet the transient response specification. This includes placing a location of 0 and the open loop gain. We will simulate the result to show that all the requirements have been met. We will redesign if required then we will design a PI controller for a zero steady state error and then we will determine gains of PID controller which are K K1, K2 and K3. Finally we will simulate the system to be sure that all requirements have been met and if some requirements haven't been met 
we will redesign the system. Dear students, in the given example, for a system in figure 1, we will design a PID controller so that system can operate a peak time that is two-third of the uncompensated system and a 20% overshoot with, with zero steady state error for step input. Students, the forward path of the system have one zero at location of minus eight and three poles at location of minus three, minus six and minus 10 in S plane. We will start a solution by first sketching the root locus for open loop system. And then we will evaluate uncompensated system operating at 20% overshoot. For a system operating at 20% overshoot, we will find a damping ratio, which will be equal to 0 0.456. And corresponding to this damping ratio of 0 0.456, we will find angle theta, which is equal to 117.1 degree and to this angle we will plot a radial line which will correspond to line of constant damping ratio. The point where root locus will intersect the line of constant damping ratio will be the desired location for dominant pair of pole and is equal to minus 5.415 plus minus 10.57 j and gain is equal to 121.5 and higher order pole, pole exists at minus 8.169 dear students if you look at the figure which represents root locus for uncompensated system operating at damping ratio of 0 0.456 or percent overshoot of 20 percent at this point this point gain is equal to 121.5 and the third pole lies at minus 8.169 now we have to compensate the system to reduce its peak time to two-third of the uncompensated one for this for this we must find uncompensated system dominant pole location using the relation of peak time. The peak time of uncompensated system is equal to pi divided by 10.57 which is equal to 0 0.297 seconds. So the new peak time will be 2 by 3 times 0 0.297 seconds or the imaginary part of new dominant pair of pole location will be pi divided by pi divided by the new peak time and this will be equal to 15.87 now we know that the compensated system or uncompensated system both will have overshoot of 20 percent so our new dominant pole will also lie on lie on line of constant damping ratio and for this if you consider a triangle and using trigonometry we can find the real part which will be equal to minus 8.13 now if you look at the figure the new design point the new design point which is minus 8.13 plus minus j 15.87 isn't the part of root locus now to include this point into the root locus, we will design a PD compensator. And using the geometry, we will calculate the zeros location. Dear students, now using the root locus, we will find sum of angles from the uncompensated system poles and zeros to the new design point 
and this angle is equal to minus 198.37 degrees degrees so the contribution required from the compensator zero will be 18.37 degrees now the location of compensator zero is shown in the figure making a right angle triangle right angle triangle and using trigonometry we found that zero is located at 55.92 on real axis so the pd controller is equal to s plus 55.92 Students, the complete root locus for PD compensated system is sketched in the figure. After the design of PD controller, now we will design ideal integral compensator to reduce the steady state error to zero, to zero for step input. Adding pole at origin or adding an integrator will improve the system type and we will have a zero steady state error. Now, any ideal integral compensator zero will work as long as, long as zero is placed near to the origin. Choosing the ideal integral compensator to be S plus 0 0.5 over S, which places a pole at origin and a zero near to the origin at location of location of minus 0 0.5 dear students after designing pi controller we will sketch the root locus for pid compensated system which is shown in the figure now along the line of constant damping ratio we will find the location of dom dominant second order poles and this is equal to minus 7.516 plus minus j 14.67 and gain associated with this is 4.6 now with this we will determine the gains of p of pid controller which are k1 k2 and k3 the product of gain and the transfer function of PID controller is given by GPID of S where K1 is equal to 259.5 K2 is equal to 128.6 and K3 is equal to 4.6 Dear students if you look at the figure in which step responses for uncompensated system, PD compensated and PID compensated system are given. A PD compensation improves the transient response by, decrease, by decreasing the time required to reach the first peak, as well as it also shows some improvement in the steady state error of the system. The complete PID controller further improves the steady state error without appreciably change, changes the transit response designed with the PD controller. Dear students, the table represents plant and compensator with dominant pair of poles, gain, damping ratio transient specification, higher order poles, and steady state error and associated constant for uncompensated, PD compensated, and PID compensated systems. Now if any of you have any questions, please ask.